Greetings psychology students. In this clip I'm going to cover Parkinson's disease which as we know is a neurodegenerative disease that disrupts activity in the nervous system and results in an array of motor symptoms. I'm going to focus on a couple of the key brain structures that are involved in Parkinson's disease as well as key neurotransmitters that cause the motor dysfunction. The effects of Parkinson's disease are it causes an array of motor symptoms, stiff muscles, slowness of movements, etc., involuntary movements, as well as some other non motor symptoms, anxiety, depression, etc. So let's look at the cause of Parkinson's disease, and we'll start with the basal ganglia, which is a, a group of structures here in the mid part of the brain that plays a key role in movement and procedural learning, but it's important to distinguish between its role and the cerebral cortex. The basal ganglia is not responsible for the initiation of movement. That occurs up here in the cerebral cortex, the outer layer of the cerebrum, uh, specifically in the, in the frontal lobe. So what, what does the basal ganglia do? Well, the, the basal ganglia provides feedback to the, cent um, to the cerebral cortex via the thalamus, which is just back here. And what that does is through the byplay between the basal ganglia and the cerebral cortex via the thalamus, it, it enables control, regulation of movement, precision of movement, etc. Now, as stated earlier, the basal ganglia is a group of brain structures, and, and one specific structure, the substantia nigra, right here, its job is to produce dopamine. And dopamine is the neurotransmitter involved that plays a key role in the control and regulation of movements. Now, not only do we need the substantia nigra to produce the dopamine, we need the right balance. And for instance, if there's an excess amount of dopamine produced by the substantia nigra, that's going to result in uncontrolled movements, ticks, etc. The flip side of that coin is if there's a lack of dopamine produced by this part of the brain, that's going to control um, result in slowed movements, uncoordinated movements, etc. And so Parkinson's disease is caused by a degeneration of, of the neurons in the substantia nigra which produce the dopamine. The striatum is also part of the basal ganglia and it's receiving those dopamine messages from the substantia nigra. Now the striatum is also receiving messages from the cerebral cortex. The cerebral cortex is thinking big picture. It's planning the actions. It sends a message to the striatum and says, right, you need to deal with the um, necessary steps and the mechanics of the movements. So the, the striatum actually plans um, the actual um, mechanical aspects of the movement required. So, for instance, if the cerebral cortex says, right, bedtime, time to clean the teeth, sends a message to the striatum, all right, can you please take care of the necessary actions of the right arm so that we can complete that task? So the striatum will then send a message back, the specific messages back to the cerebral cortex, which by the thalamus, which will then go down the spinal cord to the somatic nervous system and, and so on. Now, the striatum also does something else that's pretty important. It also basically suppresses... Um, other potential motor movements that are going to um, interfere with that. So, for instance, when you're cleaning your teeth, we've got all the actions really coming from the elbow, a bit of shoulder action, the, the wrist is pretty stiff, etc. So it's basically suppressing any movements like excessive shoulder movement or excessive wrist action that are going to ba basically um, enable cleaning your teeth to be a simple process. And, and if you've ever seen um, a video of someone with Parkinson's disease on YouTube, have a look someone trying to clean their teeth, it's actually quite challenging for them because they've lost control of those interfering actions, things that we take for granted. Another contributing factor to Parkinson's disease is the depletion of the GABA neurotransmitter. Now, GABA, as we know, has an inhibitory effect in the central nervous system, and in terms of its role in movement, it reduces the sensitivity of muscle cells to nerve stimulation. So, therefore, we've got these overly sensitive muscles and that triggers involuntary actions etc so the tremors the restless leg etc all right so i hope this has helped cheers